guys, I'm Stevie, and I have been really suffering for about eight years. But my disability was with me from birth. I'm gonna make a really long video later um, detailing like my journey and my chronic illness story and like all of my symptoms since I was four, or, like whatever. For now, I am so happy because I have a diagnosis to share with you guys. <clears throat> but first, I wanna say thank you to Disability Twitter for literally saving my life. LOL, Disability Twitter. Is that what you guys call yourselves? I don't know. And also I want to say to all the disabled people watching this, I'm new. <laughs> Please be nice to me. I just got diagnosed like a week or two ago and I'm trying to learn everything about my body and what the hell is going on in it. And then I'm trying to learn how to communicate that to others. I might go. Sorry, be nice to me please, I love you, thank you so much. You may be watching this because a friend or a family member or a coworker sent it to you because they have my condition and they want you to be able to know or understand or, you know, they're just really tired of answering questions. And if that's the case, my abled friend, I have some things to tell you real quick. <clears throat> Invisible disabilities are real. You cannot always tell by looking at someone if they are sick. So stop assuming if someone is abled or disabled by looking at them. Please, please, please stop. Cause look at me. Don't assume what you can do to help them or what they want from you, ask them. And the last one, do not give unsolicited advice to people with disabilities if one more person tells me to try yoga, I'ma twist them into a pretzel. <laughs> so, I got... <clears throat> I went to a geneticist and I got diagnosed with two things. This is very YouTuber-y. <laughs> so, so, I got diagnosed by a geneticist with two things. Thing number one is hypermobility Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, or EDS type 3, or HEDS, or HEDS, or... Some people call it hypermobility, hypermobility spectrum disorder, so HSD. I don't know. I have heads. I have EDS. What the fuck is EDS, you might be asking? Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome is a genetic disorder that affects all of my collagen. And collagen is kind of like the glue that supports like everything in your body. Skin, ligaments, muscles, organs, blood vessels everything. So since my collagen is defective, my ligaments and tendons are just like overstretchy. There are several different types of EDS and everyone with EDS varies so differently in the types of things that they have to overcome or deal with. My type is type three. It's called hypermobility type, even though like everyone with EDS is hypermobile, but I don't know why it's called that, whatever. So I have really soft skin. Thank you very much. <clears throat> a lot of you guys in the comments of my last video pointed out all the bruises I had on my arm. Like half the comments were like, are you okay? And the answer is no. <laughs> Basically all my joints are too flexible, which sounds cool until you're in excruciating pain every single day of your goddamn life. And doctors tell you that you look fine and that you're probably just depressed. Can you can tell that I'm really mad still? But hey, at least I can do party tricks. Am I right? Am I right, anyone? All right, it's the last time I'll ever do that. <laughs> and the second thing I was diagnosed with is called POTS, which stands for Postural Orthostatic Tachycardia Syndrome. This one is a comorbid disorder, meaning two or more things that happen often in the same person because they're either related to or caused by each other or whatever. Okay, so let's break that one down because it sounds like a mouthful and it sounds confusing and it sounds scary, but it makes sense, I promise. So postural refers to our posture or movement. Orthostatic means caused by being upright, so sitting up or standing. And tachycardia means heartbeat that is 100 beats per minute. So meaning that when I stand up, my heartbeat races really fast. So what the fuck does that actually mean for my actual ass life? EDS and POTS are kind of disorders that go hand in hand. Like almost everyone with EDS has POTS as well. Okay, I'm gonna explain it like we're in science class. Here we go. So the autonomic nervous system or ANS controls everything in your body that is automatic. Like after you eat, you don't have to think about digesting your food, right? Your body just does it. It controls all kinds of things like heart rate, blood pressure, temperature, respiration and sweating and digestion, and tons of other stuff like re regulating your body's response to stress or fight or flight. Ah, so many things. So there are a 
ton of conditions where your ANS is up, yo. And the most common type of ANS up is the one I have. People that have it are commonly misdiagnosed with panic attacks, chronic anxiety, or chronic fatigue syndrome. Ding, 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 ding. ding. What the fuck, babe? I've had so many misdiagnoses. I thought I had panic attacks since I was in fifth grade until I had an actual panic attack on the Harry Potter ride at Universal Studios when it shut down. And let me tell you, I had not been having hand panic attacks since I was fifth grade. I thought I was dead. I thought I was dead. Okay, so remember when I told you that EDS causes all of the collagen in my body to be overstretchy? Well, guess what's in our blood vessels? So basically my blood vessels are like up. I guess. And that's what regulates things like temperature control, your blood pressure, and all tons of shit. All tons of shit? All kinds of shit. So, for example, when someone without pot stands up, blood pools into their abdomen and their legs, right? Thanks, gravity. P.S. Fuck gravity. If gravity would just like let up 10%. Ugh. That would make my life so much better. Wait, isn't that what happens when you're on the top of a mountain? I don't know science. I'm trying really hard. Wait, should I move to the top of a mountain? <laughs> anyway, that's unrelated. So I think how it works is, normally your blood vessels should use their collagen to shrink a little bit, to cause your heart rate to bump up a little bit, to make sure you have enough blood pumping to your heart and to your brain, and not just your blood's pooling in your legs, basically. My body, sometimes my blood vessels are like, we suppose, we trying to shrink, but, Nah. So then less blood pumps back to my heart and my brain. And that's a problem because it causes some shit to happen. Worst case scenario, I faint and get a concussion or hurt myself. Other things that happen, fatigue, dizziness, palpitations, headache and shoulder pain, nausea, shaking, puffy hands and feet, breathlessness, breathlessness, or like digestive problems, which sounds ridiculous, but I need to read more about it. So, in summation, I'm a pot's heads. <laughs> Thank you for listening to me talk for 12 minutes just so I can make that joke. I don't even smoke weed. Thank you for coming to my TED talk. I really like laughing and I love hearing jokes. I like making jokes sometimes, but they're never funny. But my chronic pain and fatigue have really limited my ability to do my job. And my job is making videos for you guys. P.S. I originally started making YouTube videos because I was too sick to keep any other job. Now, I have such a dope team that is so amazing and helps me so much. I have my manager, Dan, and I have my editor, Moonshine. And yesterday, I hired an assistant slash medical caretaker that is gonna help me out day to day. And she is directly paid through Patreon donations. Paid through Patreon donations. Have you heard of Patreon.com? Link in the description. If you become a patron, that would be so amazing. It would directly contribute to uh, my well-being and being able to make more videos. Crossing my fingers for once a week videos at some point. Ugh, that would be amazing. I hurt my hand. It cracked really bad when I did that. Why is EDS so rude? So click the link in the description to check it out. I send postcards to some of you. I send gift box in the mail to some of you. And there are lots of other cool perks. So check it out. Thank you so much. Love you guys. And I cannot make this video without thanking some people that helped me so much along the way of this diagnosis. And if you could donate to their Patreons, buy something from their merch store, or even just follow them and watch their videos, oh, that would be so amazing and means so much to me. Also, they're all really hot and lovable and talented, so you're welcome. So the first one is Annie Elaney. The first time I met them, they immediately knew what I had, but didn't say it because unsolicited advice rules or something. Through our friendship, they gently and carefully and slowly helped rid me of my internalized ableism and gaslighting and personally realizing my illness and helping me get a diagnosis. And oh my God, where would I be without you, Annie? So buy their fucking shirts because that's literally their source of income and their cool shirts. And also they saved my life and my soul. Jessica Kelgren Fozar. Jessica's my literal mom, so I actually have to thank her for birthing me. She also gently guided me to finding my diagnosis with jokes and smiles and validation. Her and her wife, Claudia, are perfect. Buy her merch. And a third is Rachel, or Hot Pink Sun on YouTube and like everything else I think. Rachel has the exact same 
ADS type as me, and she also has POTS, just like me. And when I got my first bullshit diagnosis from my actual rheumatologist, she made me feel so much better because our stories are really similar, and she's always awake at 2 a.m., even though she's a, a four, like a three or four hour time difference for me, and oh my god, She's great. She always listens to me and answers my questions at 2 a.m. It's so sweet. She has lots of videos about this condition and they're really good and helpful. So check them out if you want to know more. Hi. If you think that you may have what I have. You have come so far already then, probably. I thought I would never figure out what was wrong with I me. was gaslit by doctors and nurses and exes and friends for almost a decade. So if any of this sounds familiar to you, even if you have what I have or not, I want you to know that I believe you. And one day, everyone else will too. EDS is considered a rare disease, but it's not rare. It's not. People are not gonna like that I said that. It's really underdiagnosed and it's bullshit and no doctors know what it is. Let's fix that. I'm gonna make a really long documentary about my entire experience and then do some fundraisers and then also try to sue hotels or whatever for not being accessible. I don't know, what, what am I gonna do with my life? Am I gonna be a disability activist now? Who knows, tell me in the comments, what should I do with my life? Thanks. Oh, oh, I also wanna say doctors are dickheads. Trust your instincts and if you have the energy, Remind them that they work for you. <sighs> See you guys next time in a sex ed video. Now that I can finally breathe. Love you so much. Bye. If I was Jake Paul, that would be my <laughs> 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 pussy nation. No, I don't know. What the fuck am I doing?